gone. We have got a mega random free for all. Let's hop in and check it out. It has got the rule set that Drongo has introduced. So we're going to have kings for each players. And also, uh, we're going to have a pretty cool overlay so that we can see what's happening all times with every player. Like, shout out to this being put together. Good job once again by Drongo. And one beautiful thing, ah, oh, this is what I love. By using this type of UI as opposed to Capture Age, which, you know, starting to feel like a bit of a dinosaur in some ways. No, no offense, Capture Age crew, but I want my zoom function. Well, because of this UI mod, Oh, that feels good, right? That that right there, oh, mm, oh, that, that's creme de la creme. Look, look guys, oh, mini map, big map. We don't want the mini, we want the big. And well, let's hop in and introduce the players because you can see first up on our screen, it's been a while since we got to see this guy, the Artista, Donut himself. Of course, playing as a deli. His next door neighbor is actually the one and only Beastie, our most recent champion in Golden League. He's playing in the green as the French. And shout out to Voldemort, I see you leading the souls astray. Thank you very much, my friend. I hope you had some good streams. Uh, fingers crossed, maybe we get a chance to see you in this tournament. But as we continue through, we've got Avalie just to the south. Now this is going to be a hotly contested area. Free plays. Screen and a half between them. That's going to be a tight one, especially considering Beastie's between an English player and a Delhi player. So potentially a lot of aggro coming his way. As we move around the map, though, we can see in the pub, we have got Recon over here, the tricky raccoon. Playing as the HRE. Now, remember, they did all random their sieves. It just happens that Recon got what I think is one of his most comfortable. You know, this man was known to be an Abbasid spammer, but I actually would put him more as an HRE main these days. And parked right next to him. It was, of course, going to be Kor. Of course, Kor would get the Mongols. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Kor and why this is kind of an of course moment, he's that type of rat that'll look for a corner. And the brilliant thing is when you play the Mongols, you don't have to start in a corner, but you can definitely find your way there with a little bit of time. And it's great to see the return of Mr. Munch. Mr. Munch was in uh, one of our last Mega Random games. I think he was in the last one we posted where we had the, the great Ramathon. And he's going to be playing as the English and then rounding out to the north, two players keeping up each other warm at night. Uh, we have got Yun Sung Bin as the Broken Malians, the Moldians. And well, who else could be manning it? The man who has such distaste for it. This is actually Marine Lord in the blue parked right next to him. He's going to be joined by Kalp. Kalp, who? <laughs> he got the English. Dude, some of these players just getting like the cozy sieves. Honestly, I, I would say, for me, if I think of a sieve that resonates with Kalp, it has to be the English. This guy, he likes his more kind of defensive style if he can get away with it, play orderly into the later point in the power spikes in the game. But he might not get an opportunity to do that when he's this oppressed, right? When you've got a Malian player parked this close to you, it could get a bit awkward. People were asking about, like, you know, if there's a tree, why do they stop the tree? Well, you have to stop the tree because, I mean, if you've ever played Mega Random and you've just had a player rush you down unfairly, you'll understand. More importantly is because also you're starting with a king. So you need time to regroup and get your king somewhere safe. Otherwise, it just simply wouldn't be fair. Well, we can see how bold and brazen is <laughs> being with his king here. Luckily for him, the English TC hasn't gone up. I don't think there would have been enough Arafar to kill him off. Then again, if he got close enough, maybe. You have to remember, like, the, the vision is quite limited, even with your king. So he's not the greatest of scouts, but he's all you've got at the start of the game. And yes, you are correct. This is a type of regicide. Um, I think these guys are a bit faster than your typical kings. And, uh, oh, Kalp. <laughs> I think Kalp was the only one who got cursed with this, this game. That's so unfortunate as well. Like, look at... Look at the space he's got here. He, he would have to chop down several trees just to build a lumber camp to start working this area. I think every other player uh, doesn't have the, themselves stuck in a washing machine here. I think every other player is safe in that regard. There is a decent amount of water. I actually really like this spawn, uh, especially considering where the players have gone, simply because it kind of feels like there's nothing for free, right? No one's getting this... this uncontested water zone, or they shouldn't in theory. Maybe there's one over here for Kalp, but it's kind of limited in terms of deep water. A hell of a lot of shoreline though. And we have to remember shoreline did get buffed. Right, it went up to, uh, it was 0 0.7 from 0 0.63. Meanwhile, deep water did get nerfed down to 0 0.9. So not as big of a difference as it once was. Of course, the bigger deal still is that deep water fish keep regenerating over time. And of course, he, yeah, of course, Core would just move his TC across. Oh, I hate these Mongols. Bloody Mongols. Best win rate in the highest ranks, guys. I don't know if they'd say they have the best win rate in Mega Randoms. I think they are the most flexible. They have a really great late game they can quite easily achieve. Their ability to kind of dodge the bullet as well is frustrating. 
So definitely a desirable sieve to get. Like if I if I'm looking at the sieves, I'm saying who got the best sieves here. I mean, <laughs> there's no denying the English here, right? Three players got the English on a random. I want to see what the Marlins can do, though. We have very limited data in terms of Mega Random Free Throws and their performance in that hyper late game. And considering that whenever we watch them 1v1s, they kind of look underwhelming when Imperial Age kicks in and they reach that true late game. I I'm not sure how well they're going to do in the late game. Uh, even if you do some like massing Morris Scouts, right? I, I don't think that contests a lot of the, the Horseman Sears in the late game in this one. You, know, you think about the English, the attack speed aura on the defensive. You think about the French with the Royal Bloodlines. No, curious to see what Marino's going to be able to do. Open is going to be an interesting one this late because it looks like for now, Dunnar and Beastie, they, they aren't going to just screw each other over. And admittedly, it's it's kind of like mutually assured destruction, right? If one player goes to attack the other, even once they get tech up, you know, you're going to have to deal with these TCs. And by the way, remember that Donati could actually begin an attack right now. He does have those fishing boats. Kalp. <laughs> That is a bold move, sir. Just a reminder, folks, these kings, they only have 200 HP and they do not heal. You have to get someone out to heal them. So very risky to do that. I believe they start with zero ranged armor. And luckily for him, Marine Lord did not have all the villages nearby because if he garrisoned all 11 of them, I mean, 11 times eight, right? Like you're almost going to insta blitz the, the king down. Uh, is the 50 pop that they have when they kill a king mod going to be used in the tournament? As far as I'm aware, no. So the way it works is... And, and by the way, this is a nice change, I think, from Outback to Octagon 1. I already complimented uh, Drongo about this. We talked about it a bit. And I was saying it's actually a great move by him. He's like having Regicide. Regicide can be a bit funky because I think the kings are a bit lethargic, but easy to snipe out sometimes. But the thing that works nicely here is it gives you a very clear indicator of who killed the player, right? Whoever kills that king clearly is the person that will get the points. And I believe, um, you know, the, there's going to be a big focus around, like, first blood getting extra points, and then, of course, one point or whatever for uh, each king you slay. So it, it's it's a much more logical way of doing this. I think it got very messy last time, where sometimes it's like, well, how many landmarks did you kill? You know, how many did you kill? And I definitely felt bad for the admins and Drongo trying to keep track of that at all times for point purposes. Obviously, when we cast a few, we didn't have to worry about that because we just come for the hype and we check the scoreboard afterwards. But it is an admin's nightmare. So tech ops should start coming through soon. Wait, is th wait, is that Avali? <laughs> wait, what? I only just know... Like, my, my mind was like, yeah, that's just orange, right? No. <laughs> so for some reason, Avali is on the other side of the map on a pond with two other players. A very small pond, by the way. And, ugh. Oh. Kill him. He deserves to die for this. Of course he was going to do it. He got the Mongols. He's into the Silver Tree. This will paint a target on your back. Now, I'm looking at where the neutral trade posts are. Most of them are centralized. You can get a small route going over here, but you'd have to cut past uh, the HRE. Might be a bit dangerous. So it might be that he just delays building into the Silver Tree. He has got an Uvu placement over here possible for the double production. And his best bet is probably to trade with this neutral trade post, as there's a clear line to it that only bypasses uh, the English dock. So, you know, and anything else isn't really going to see it until you've got a few traders deep. Definitely not something I'm expecting Core to heavily invest in in the early game, simply because, you know, there's too much still up in the air and too many dangers. I mean, if we check from Core's perspective, yeah, he hasn't even really scouted everything out yet. Oh, I feel bad for BC. This is such a bad position to be in. He has crawled out to the stone. So there's two options here. Either BC's thinking about getting a second TC, which there's a decent position over here near the deer. You're going to get the fat wood line. There is plenty of wood in this area. Uh, the alternative is he's just planning to get in placements. And that would be a sound play considering what's happening on the big lake. So Marine Lord snuck all the way out here. And the cheeky git actually got the side pond as well. So main swimming pool, jacuzzi. And he's got to be feeling very comfortable like he's in a jacuzzi right now. Because he's less likely to be assaulted than what we're seeing over here, right? You've got a situation where both Beastie and Donati are in each other's faces. So I wouldn't be surprised if Marine Lord just gets the north side of the, the pond for free. I'm not sure if he's doing the no names in game rule. I didn't see that. I'm pretty sure like it's, it's kind of similar in some ways to Outback Octagon 1 for people wondering about the rules in number two, where 
you can't, uh, there's no coercion out of the game. You can't just like have secret messages going or whatever, and you can't type in DMs when you're playing the game, but you can talk in the game chat. And you can like, you can justify logical things that way. Like guys, we should team up on X because he hasn't been fighting and he has like four times the eco that any of us do. That type of kind of coercion where it's logical uh, because it gives you a chance to win the game. And there's always going to be an element of that, right? There's only so much you can control players because it is a free-for-all. I think the goal here is just to kind of create a, a dynamic where players feel encouraged to be a bit more loose with the alliances, I guess, is, is one way of putting it. Uh, also, I believe the, the prize pool is going to be a bit more, more uh, balanced in its spread, right? It's still beneficial to get a, a better placement, but it's not going to be the you know, difference of zero to 100 if you come fifth instead of, you know, sixth. Which I like. Really big shout out to Drongo for that. Like, one of my big concerns for Outback Octagon 1 is that, you know, you, you have played all these weeks and it's kind of tough that you could easily just get a blood raid and get nothing for it. I think the, the better approach we're seeing, especially with the bigger prize pools, if you're participating, there's some money on the line for you. I think Donati was expecting spring oil chips here. Oh, it looks like Beastie actually got intercepted trying to build up an additional dock here. So he's heavily outnumbered. He does at least have the emplacement. But Donati, he could just spam demos here and get rid of this dock and then have control of the east side. Gonna be difficult now considering Beastie's moving out for another dock up. Dow. Uh I have my doubts this is gonna work. Oh, oh, oh what? What was that damage? Bro, this guy just picked up a double damage rune. He must be in the wrong game. <laughs> oh my. That arrow spread was so tight. And even now, even now, just look at the damage output. <laughs> kind of feels like BC is getting scanned. I don't know what's going on with these Dow ships, but they are bullying. Nemo's also being spammed out. So one more should finish what he started. And that dock is still not up. So, I mean, Beastie hung out to dry here, really. Literally, because he won't be able to access water. He's playing a very dangerous game with his gold access as well because the frustrations that Avalis caused him. Avali, who is going up with the White Tower, so going to guarantee this area for himself. Doesn't really need to go for the TC, right? He does the fishing on a different lake. Might even try to snake his way onto another one over here. This is actually not a bad lake to, to drop a dock on. Now, there's only one deep water fish, but there is like what? Uh, I want to say there's eight shoreline fish here. So definitely worth a dock plus four or five fishing boats. Remember behind this, by the way, Avali does have an entire corner to himself. This is... A really good game for the pink player. Just, just check the way things are spawned out here, right? He's got these fat wood lines that you can easily wall off to create a very safe farmland behind him. There's backup pockets of resources, gold, stone, surely not big stacks, but there's two of them. And remember, that with that wood wall, there is plenty of wood, right? And that's going to be a very crucial element for English late game. For most Civs late game, especially when you consider in free falls, it becomes a lot about horsemen in that later phase. So what do you really need? Well, you need food and wood. What can the English get in this kind of format? Definitely enough wood to go around. And if there's one thing you can guarantee they're going to have plenty of in the late game, it's going to be food via the farm boom. So really good position for him. Meanwhile, north side, a lot of frustration back and forth between these two. It looks like Cal has tried to play wide and be a nuisance, but I don't think he can do enough here. Not only is Muriel on his way up with the Farimba, but you're playing longbows into javelin throwers. That's a problematic matchup. While you do have the range advantage, seven versus the six, you can't penetrate. Look at the free ranged armor here. And the fact that these javelins, like it's not just the base damage at eight, they get an extra four. And they just completely obliterate longbows. Cal, let's try to make lemonade while he's here. Take out a few villages for his trouble. It's going to cost him his longbow. Now, behind this, Kalp is not teching up. He's playing a bit more gluttonous, has gone for the second TC, and has moved onto that safe lake we talked about, right? No one else should really contest him here. He's more beastie. He's now going to go for that land transition, so second TC coming. I'm expecting pressure soon out of Donati, though. Don hasn't really done much more past the initial uh, dock slay, so now he's just in the, the phase of, of fish boom. It's not going to be for free, though. He has to actually fight for it. He pushes Marine Lord off. So Marine Lord, because of the, the kind of multifaceted assault, right, on his main base as well as this kind of pocket deco, 
Uh, he does have to surrender it over. You know, he keeps a few fishing boats alive, but he can't easily boom anymore. And considering that he has Kalp right up his ass, you know, boot, worn and all, he can't really afford to get bogged down with a naval fight. So expect Marine Lord to just kind of be content with the small lake. Not content, but accepting of it. And then turn his attention towards Kalp. I haven't really checked on a Munch so far. Mr. Munch has had a pretty free game. King's Pass, TC, whole lake to himself. Has also walled off. Should be aware of what Core is doing. In fact, it looks like Mr. Munch and Core are twins. Yeah, it, it turns out that they uh, they subscribe to each other's uh, kick channel. You know, follow for follow type stuff right here. Because while one player gets his whole leg to himself, the pressure coming his way from the south side, the trade-off is literally trade for Core. And, well, I've said it before, I'll say it again. You can't spell corner without core. You can spell it badly with core. But the point remains true, no matter what see if he's playing, no matter what game I'm watching of Mega Random Free For All, core always finds a way to get his corner. For now, it is bagging him a hell of a lot of gold. 153. That's got the yam kicking in as well to speed that up. Meanwhile, on the land of Beastie. <laughs> All right, this is what we call the discount Magano line, when you can't afford keeps, but you're going to just line it with TCs instead. Maybe we get a final one towards the wood line. Actually, oh, he's, out of, he's out of stone, so there's no more stone for him to go for a, a fourth TC. I wouldn't mind it here otherwise. I think his next goal is just get Castle Age as quickly as possible. In fact, looks like he's about to have the gold required. A few more players are on the way, so Cal. It's looking to reach up. In the meantime, Mr. Munch has done what you do when you're given a, a free start like this. You don't wait around the weak point of the English game. No, 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 no. You go as fast as possible to the late game. Already in Imperial Age. No one else likely to catch up. Recon, actually nowhere near himself as the HRE. In fact, Core is the one who should be able to do it next. The food's finally coming in. Showing you how strong the trade can be. I'm kind of worried about Recon's position here. He's playing condensed, but he's playing in a quite a, an, an undefended area. Like this wood line kind of gives some some block point, but the front of his base is very open. So I'd like to see him kind of flesh out to the west side, get some more walls like this down. It's just so much open ground to try and cover with that though. Has at least got the farm mass building with the HRE buff from the Arkham Chapel. This is going to get him a long way. The way I was explained to people was like, you know, you can't just think about this being a beneficial thing to do from the 40% increased gathering speed on food. It's the fact that you gathered wood 40% faster to then put into this farm that will gather 40% faster. It gives you a much quicker conversion time than most sieves have in terms of making a return on the investment. Beastie, well, it looks like he's just going to give up. Avali dove in with one raid, and that's enough to convince him there's simply no way back in. Trebuchets were taking out the primary TC. Ladies and gents, Beastie, our Golden League champion, is not going to be the champion of this free-for-all. He is the first one out. Poor guy. I mean, he was trying to snake his way out of a sticky situation, but sometimes this really is just how the spawns go. You think you've got a good position, and you're not too greedy, but... Looks like it was too much. And Cal, he also ends up getting assassinated here. So it looks like there was a chase down. Marine Lord did find the king. He has been slain. So just like that, we lose two big players. Six remain. This now means Marine Lord has got the Norman corner. All two is lonesome. RT can play into the western corner fully here, actually. And as the Delhi with compound defender unlocked, this should be where we just see him keep boom. There's plenty of stone in the area to allow for this as well. Right, he's got like, what, three stacks of 1,200? Yeah, he could just layer this with keeps. I think he could create a complete safe zone on the west side here. But Avalee's also going to get that south side for free. So expect Core to be the next target player here. Remember, he is between Mr. Munch and Recon. And Recon is already going in. The moment the Core went for that tech up, he started spamming out the men at arms. Good lordy. And that was with Regnitz. He was just layering this over time. Recon, we were worried about him. Maybe he's found a way to get past our concerns. I mean, there is still a concern about this Baochuan that just has free reign over the Assault. But he's not really killing off the MAAs quick enough. Remember, Recon just wants to keep his opponent boxed in. He has got enough farms to keep this push going. Almost definitely. 
That's a question whether Mr. Munch wants to help. And M Mr. Munch actually could just claim a scalp here. In fact, he's in a position where he could gain two. He might be a bit paranoid about what's happening to the north, though. Right? Like, because you are in a situation where surely you've scouted out that there were two players up here. You know Camp just got eliminated. You're not sure just how strong Marine Lord is yet. There's always a risk you're going to find out sooner than you're ready. It's like prayer tent. He's going to have to pack up and run away. Definitely not feeling good about that one. Just to waste a lot of time trying to repair. And he has parked himself this double Bauchu arm, but keep in mind Recon doesn't have to con completely commit to this men at arm spam. He could easily just now add in a bit of siege. One or two Trebs could do a lot of work here. Looks like for the time being, he's just going to skirt wide. Garnet Palace already down to half HP. Trade's still going behind this, so it somewhat keeps Core alive, but his food is making him look dead. Outside of the fishing vessels, he has absolutely no other way of getting food right now. His villagers can only run north so far before they're going to be in the clutches of Mr. Manchu. So far, he's been willing to, to piece it out, but if you start moving, in, migrating, in fact, into his territory, his stance on uh, Mongol migration might completely flip. Karnat was at least able to back away. So maybe get a few more units out to defend. And has started to push out the hand cannon here. So this is where this spam from Recon starts to kind of burn itself out. But there's still other targets for him. He's marching around. He knows about the trade. A small window of opportunity here, folks. Remember, we are in the Imperial Age, and you did hear that correctly. The cannons are firing. A nuisance that will just continue to be a frustration in this game. Apparently, Beastly was not happy because Core was trading through the red base, and this is seen as a team. And, and well, this is what we, we talked about before, right? Like, what constitute teaming, uh, constitutes teaming is going to be hard to define always in these type of environments. So, like, there's a difference between teaming and piecing, right? I think that's going to be one very big um, classification that needs to kind of be ironed out, right? Like, this is... I wouldn't call this teaming. I would call this, uh, like, piecing, right? Uh, something, something, something along that line. So you're not actively attacking each other, but you're also not, you know... The up, uh, the way it works. You're not actively attacking each other. Um, you're not. You are in a way helping each other, but you're not doing it where it's like, oh, I killed this player, bro, so you could rebuild your base type thing. That's going to be one of those hard kind of elements to differentiate, I think. And I think it's a kind of nightmare we're just going to see again when we get into Outback Octagon. But. Like I said, I've had a look at the rule set. I got an early peer and intern. I gotta say, like compared to the previous one, I think it, it's a movement in the right direction. There's just always gonna be elements of teaming and and call outs of who did what in free for all tournaments. It's simply unavoidable. For anyone who watched the, the good old school free for all tournaments you had in things like Warcraft 3, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the example I always gave is you'd have situations where a player in first place, second place, and third place can clearly be defined in their current state of the game. Now, in that situation, you'd expect second and third place to join together to beat first place. That's never what happened. In fact, what would happen instead is first and second place would attack third place. Second place's logic is that if I take out third place, I at least get second. You're like, well, that's stupid. He's not planning to win. It's like, well, the alternative is you being in a situation where uh, sorry, no, 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 second place, first place. It was third place and first place. Let me start again. So what would happen is first place and third place would attack second place. So here's the logic. Third place gets an improvement to second place. First place's biggest threat being second place is removed. So you guarantee you win as first place. I've used the words place a lot, but hopefully you followed there and didn't think too much about fish. That type of dynamic existed in tier one free-for-all tournaments. You could not get rid of it because it just made sense, right? Third place could never win. That was kind of a given. And most people would argue, well, third place and second place should work together. But the logic that came out of that is, you know, if third place helps second place kill first place, all he's done is crown second place the winner, right? He's still gonna get second place. So why take an awkward risk there when instead you could just work with first place and still guarantee second? These are the politics of free-for-alls. I don't know if I made that clear, if that was confusing. I think right now someone's probably dribbled a little bit and they're headbutting their keyboards and burning their headset. But this is, this is just an unavoidable factor of free throws. 
You'll never get around it. All right, a lot of anarchy while we've been talking about this, though. It's Avali. It's starting to be pressured. Looks like Don Arty went in for the aggro keep drop. A bold move up against the English, especially with the stupid bark ship. Look, what the? <laughs> Not only does it look like a Gatling gun, but it comes with a range of a sniper rifle. <laughs> Well, at least go see things repaired up here. So pressure going the way of Avali. Remember what we talked about behind this, like free land to just set up farms. And not really much anyone's going to do to stop it. Especially considering Recon is still bogged down. He needs to clean up Core. Core who's still surviving. Wouldn't say he's thriving though. Has moved out for more gold with the step read out. His army is looking a little bit pitiful though. I think Recon should be able to kind of plow down this, right? He's got the Springles, which can actually take out the Bauchuans. There are counter springles that are being built into by core, but it's much slower for him considering the damage to his eco. It will be advantageous if he can get scale, though. Remember, he uh, he can get the extra range via the upgrade that you simply can't match. The shutter trigger is improved, which means that the HRE will just be outgunned with their own springles. In fact, right now, it, Recon still hasn't upgraded. Is that yeah? It's coming through. Once the shot trigger's complete, expect him to take out the Bauchuans, at which stage Core is easy pickings. There's not really much he can defend with right now. In fact, he takes a fight away from the Navy. I oh, wish he had that assistance. And Arm's going to clash here. Should clean up the Vanguard. Remember, most of what's being used here, uh, this is just premium units pushed for free from the Carnet Palace. Which sounds great, right? You got it for free. But it takes a long time. Mr. Munch, like, what is his goal here? Has he finally started to target out Marine Lord? If so, it's quite late. I think there was a golden opportunity earlier on where he could have just gotten this northern corner, completely secure, and not have to worry about his flank. But, I mean, now Marine Lord, you know, he has a stable army. He's building up the, the walls gradually. Mr. Munch has definitely made his job harder. He has at least got a strong economy to allow wave after wave, but he's going to need it here. This night, this first clash, is going to be saying good night to these poor English boys. Right, just a few Donzo, Javelins, everything else. Hope you like being a porcupine. Meanwhile, on the line of recon. Pressure should be mounting up, and yes, indeed it does. So Bauchuans have been taken out. Trebuchets have been added in. Core looks like it's going to be the next one on the chopping block here. I don't think Donati is going to die anytime soon. I also don't see Avali falling too fast here. The Barkshire is going to guarantee that. And also Bombards with the attack speed door. It's going to only be Network of Castles, but should allow him to breach the keeps ASAP. Wait, has Don I... Oh, he's only getting the Madrasas now because he's finally in Imperial Age, but like, how many keeps are we talking here? Okay, he's got two behind this, so he's has still got a free TC situation with a full lake to himself. Don's in a really strong position here. If he can get rid of Avali, I don't think he has to worry about anyone else until a 1v1. Right. At worst, he's Kingmaker. At best, he's crowning himself. But he has to get through Avali. I fret the late game. Could brutalize him. And it's Bomba. Oh my god, Avali not. What? I do not know if that was intentional. But Donati he just lost an entire army because he couldn't attack the Bombard. The villagers and the hand cannoneers were body blocking everyone there. So instead of attacking the unit in the way and moving on, Donati just headbutted himself there. Just stonewalled himself. Unit after unit, just shuffling around, playing a little dance, doing a Congo line of death. I, I, I mean, it seems like whoopty freaking doodah when you look at the food for Donati, but I, I don't think so. I think that that's exactly what Avali needed. Now he can start to break out a little here. Probably look to rebuild up. Yep, White Tower is being rescaled. Double Bob Barn could be a frustration. This tiny wall as well from Avali. <laughs> I would be so frustrated if I was Artie after that. I mean, you get rid of those Bombards, it really stunts Avali in this game. It slows him down so much, you can think about like crawling up another keep, but now you've got these trebuchets, and you're going to have bigger concerns. You might not be able to get close enough to kind of stalemate a siege. Instead, you might have an angry English boy pushing out very soon. Meanwhile, Mr. Munch has turned on court. <laughs> 
We said it wasn't teaming, but the peace time is definitely over. Now, Core is going to be left in pieces. Now, in the Outback Octagon environment, the way this can be advantageous is if Mr. Munch knows that Recon is killing Core and he waits to take the step readout out. I'm wondering if the players are going to play with that kind of logic in mind. Um, Immediately, you could just go for the king, though, right? I think the better goal is just die for the king. That TC isn't going to last long at this rate. Push in. Nest the bees plus the Huipi Pao and the Bao Chuan, all the fancy names. But it doesn't really matter. Cool. He's in desperation mode. Remember, you do not need to take out the landmarks. If you just take out the king, boom, and you win. Cool. I mean, this dive out, that's a full hand cannoneer army, but you're going to have to dive past these static defenses. Death to religion says the Mongols here. All the prelates go down. That wasn't historically how they felt, but in this game it is. And wait, Marine Lord only just got Imperial Age? Oh, what well, a Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> he took his time getting there, though. He's secure in the corner, at least. This can be the point where he starts to break out and get aggro with cavalry. And yes, thank you, Artie, for reminding me. You don't die if you lose all the landmarks, as long as your king remains. So, guys, let me tell you what the Outback Octagon strategy is going to be. Placement points. Come out here, you chop the tree line, you go in, you place your king here, and you forget about him. They can't kill you. And then you spend 30 minutes at least just all chat mocking people. Chat to EGC TV. I see you, Pesty. Thank you very much. Come through the sub. Welcome back to the swarm. Oh, oh. More bzz, bzz going on here, though. Nesta Bees is going to be able to start burning the keep. And Recon. Oh, no. Is he? Well, no, it's just a few nights. He hasn't hit the E repairs, though. Right, there we go. Recon, a man of efficiency, min maxing it. Magnificent. Meanwhile, Core, not looking magnificent, but technically alive? This is like when someone chops off your limbs and you're bleeding and you're like one pint of blood away from death. It's like, technically, I'm alive. Probably not for long, but it counts. Core is likely to be the next out, though. Like, th there's a stalemate between Avalon and Donati. Although, I, I say that. Donati's given a lot of ground over. I don't expect Avali to push in too fast here, as there's a lot of hesitation on what's happening elsewhere on the map. But it does start to look like Adi is going to lose this fight. It's English with static point defenses and walls going up, creating choke points. You know, attack speed or a Spears is not something you want to be playing into here. Now, I don't care if Don Adi is a Britney Spears fan. This is not the type of Spears you want in life. Not to mention the meaty men arms. Meanwhile, Mr. Munch, he's still just being this, this mid-map rotating frustration, right? Like, he's not fully committing to trying to kill a player. He's just running around like an absolute pain in the ass. Everyone has experienced this type of player in a mega round of free-for-all. Everyone hates this type of player in a mega round of free-for-all. You know he'll never get married in life simply because he has commitment issues. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Munch. Now, if I remember correctly, there is no uh, wonder victory condition here. So at some point, Marine Lord is going to want to come out. I wonder if he just switches full cavalry. That, yeah, there is a lot of stables here. So we could just see mass sofas, or we could just go the way of the warrior scout. <laughs> I don't blame him after that game where the Muslim stomped him with them. Eh? Yeah, it's like, it would be fresh on my memory, too. Interesting that he's clashing with Mr. Munch, though. would have an easy way in. I like these identifying that Mr. Munch is the biggest threat right now, though. He's just sitting here with his fat king getting even foul, more plump, feeling completely uncontested. You know, it's kind of like if anyone played Fat Princess, amazing capture flag game, by the way. He's fed so much cake, no one can pick her up and move her. So at some point, it is going to have to be addressed. The problem is, like, right now, it's going to be a 1v1. Like, Core doesn't want to start a fight with a new player, and Recon can't get there until Core is dead. That just creates this awkward kind of stalemate where I'm not expecting Marine Lord to necessarily get in. But you will at least keep Mr. Munch out of the affairs to the south, which benefits Recon, remember, because that raid in on the Palace of Swabia was hitting his eco pretty hard. Oh, walls have gone up for Avli now. So he's pretty chilling. Oh, Artie. Artie, you're a Normandy believer too. 
You know, fun fact, I uh, I actually landmark sniped Avli the other day in a, a free-for-all, this exact same strategy. The lake was bigger, but the goal was the same. You're, I see you're a man of fine taste here. <laughs> I mean, it's just a small wood wall, but why deal with it when you can go around it? Sadly, it's a, a very spottable attack, considering there's an outpost, which I probably shouldn't press that button, but if we check the... Yeah, he knows. Avali definitely should know. <laughs> oh, no. He is distracted a little because of Mr. Munch, but... I, I'm not going to lie. As much as I want Hardy, I, I, I don't know if I can have faith in this. But we're going anyway. Movement in. Avali. Distracted by the Knights on the backside. He peeled his army back. That's going to give some ground. As Ardy will march in, but uh, this is not enough horsemen to burn down all the landmarks. Remember, it's a Barkshire plus a White Tower, and he's diving past the boiling oil. This is going to stink. Response Force now in position. Ardy, not like this. No, no, no not like th the burn. Kind sir, the burn. TC about to fall, but the army. I feel like they're going to fall quickly here. They're getting eviscerated. Choke point to hold them back. So now you have to take a keep or a keep. Either one. I, I do know that the king is inside the TC, but look, he just hops across. This is the problem. He moves into the Barkshire. Now what do you do? Oh, man. Avali, that defense is so on point. He didn't bother with the north side. He just defended the south side. He got rid of the wraparound. I get what Artie was trying for. I appreciate it. He's even highlighting chat. I agree, but you can't get the king like that, right? You need, I think you need a lot more horsemen. It's, oh, man. I'm trying to think like which way you could play that. Maybe if you have bombards instead of trebs, that can work because you have to kill the TC quick enough. But the problem here is like, because it will ungarrison on the south side, you know you have to sit there, but you have to sit there against Berkshire, White Tower, boiling oil, and then all of these troops hammering you. I did love that detail, by the way, where Avali shifted between the TC and the Council Hall to block a, a wraparound. That was on point. Okay, fair enough, Ardy. I, I didn't quite see the, the right, the exact moment the King came out of the TC Evo, so I, I, I forgive you on that one. You are right, though. You would have had him with the hand cannon is. Definitely a lot closer than the first apparent. I'm still racking my brain over how, uh, over how Core isn't dead, by the way. <laughs> That's the biggest takeaway from me in this one. I don't know how Core is not dead. <laughs> is this, so this is a minimum distance, right? That's an interesting thought here is like, because Avali, it could have been even harder if the, the Barkshire is right next to it. I think that that's not minimum distance, right? You can get closer. Yeah, you definitely can. Damn. Could you imagine if that worked though? I mean, I, I, oh, dude, if you got him as well, like I, I if I was like, out, like in Avali's shoes, I'd be feeling that afterwards, like that half a tile killed him. But he stays alive, man. Damn. Meanwhile, in cool land. <laughs> You were just blind. That's fair. I appreciate Artie's transparency on that. He's correct. He, he had the opportunity to get the king. I've definitely got to change my, my mindset to remember, like, the king. How easily sniped he is there. Because you did have a lot of hand cannoneers. King should call something. I mean, he has a crown above his head. I think he's, like, decently viewable. March out. Marine Lord trying to breach through the walls to get into Mr. Munch's base. And, has, like, Artie, I mean, he's going to go again, right? He has to. But keep in mind, this time, I, I don't see the hand cannonades. That's problematic. I think, like, the, the hand cannonades, especially after what you just said, like, that's what you're going to need here. But instead, Avali's going to be the one making his move first. He moves out. He can move fast here. It's not a long route, right? Where, where are we storing the king? Are we... Oh, there we go, Artie boy. <laughs> He smuggled him out. He's not going down any time too soon, but the treason can reveal him, remember. Meanwhile, Marine Lord marching his way in. He has one target. I Is this enough? There's no way, right? 
All right, so we know Artie was, was legally blind. Marine Lord, though, not so much. He's got his specs on, he's got his target, and I love that straight in the ram, yes! Okay, but I don't, I don't know if he has enough here. This was a good idea from Marine Lord, but now he looks a little bit like a chimp. It doesn't work out. Rams are going to be cleaned up, but dude, these are the type of maneuvers I'm looking forward to when we get out back Octagon 2. And if at first you don't succeed, uh, you're not an idiot. Just do it again. They only remember the time it works, folks. Yeah, you're right. He's left his, his king in the TC as well. Like that—that that was the kind of thing. Like uh, I didn't mention it, but I should have. Like I, I'm surprised Avli didn't move this across sooner. We have to remember, though, folks, that these people—they are now only getting familiar with this format. Most people avoid a rage aside, like the plague. So it's going to take some time to kind of optimize what you do with your king. But 100%, you should have him uh, in the box here. Although it has less health than TC, it'll have boiling oil. So if people hard commit onto it, they're going to get burnt. Also, just the layering of the base, right? For, for, for Avalie, it would have made more sense. I think for Mr. Munch, it's a bit further out there. But considering he's being assaulted by Marine Lord, it would put him further away from Fret. Speaking of which, Marine Lord back in again. It's Donzo party time. An interesting choice up against Mass Longbows. I actually would, like, it's not the worst of ideas, though, right? Because if he gets in and he torches down the TC, they all just hurl a javelin and instantly kill the king. It's a pretty cool idea for the Malians in this format, actually. And wait, you're right. Mr. Munch only has Vet Lombos. Oh. Oh. So this shouldn't have even been as half effective as it was, but he's in again. This time with the Elite Warrior Scouts, these units are absolutely absurd. Every time they get hit, they're already healing. I, I don't think this is working, though. He is at least keeping Mr. Munch oppressed. Not able to do much else. Meanwhile, Don I it looks dumb with doing things right now. He has to march the entire army away. He has one shot. One opportunity. But not in this game. <laughs> oh, man. He can try to, to grief someone else. But sadly for him, the only person uh, that you could target on this side of the map is red. You'd have to go all the way across to orange or purple. No one else is accessible due to the stone balls. Meanwhile, Court. Had, has he got his crap together? Oh my. He's got 136 military. Yeah, oh, okay. But in fairness, a lot of that is about you on. But he has got the, the Weepy Pals. And what happened over here? Like, recon. He, he couldn't finish. I mean, there's it, it, less Coup de Grasse and more Coup de Arse. I, 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 I... He could actually lose very easily here. Where's the king at? Has he smuggled him out? I, I can't see him. Is he? No, there's no way he's in the TC, right? No. Okay, okay. Ah, so he borrowed in. He's hiding in the tree line. This is not what I would call an advisable move. <laughs> because you see, Core has got horse archers and Magadai. And you haven't chopped that tree line quite deep enough to be protected from them firing over the wall. So if Core just ungarrisons his king right now and pays 400 gold for treason, he will immediately click over to this spot. Time big. He hasn't done that. Despite the fact he's got over 2,000 gold in the bank, he chooses not to. Recon is going to try to defend. Mass coverance. Not a bad idea. Just to insta-snipe out the Magadai. Close to, at least. He's able to get from the SDB. He's a pushback. Will commence. Core misses an opportunity to take ahead. And then Don Arty land. It's a risk of looking like Don Fai because Avali is on the move. Avali, you can tell that this guy has been using treason. The way he's moving with intent. He has one goal in mind. And <laughs> Adi, can we? Is this, uh, is this where we're going? Is this what we're doing? You are. You want to give an in your defense moment? <laughs> Now, if we, guys, if we build enough of these 
and stack one unit in each of them. They'll never know. Safety for the king. Ease. Okay, but now, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna click on a ram. And I'm gonna click back on a sea star. I'm gonna ask the question why. Because although it does have more raw HP, it has much less ranged up. But I'll allow it. Meanwhile, the Rams over here are shuffling in. Mr. Munch is about to get munched. He looks like the butt munch right now. 22k food and no way of spending it. If he just donated to charity, he could feed the bloody world right now. Ay, ay, ay. The old Don Arty. Riser Rohirrim arrived. He will be able to get in, so both the Bombards go down. It does cost him enough horses to supply Tesco's for at least a month, though. So that's it's going to be problematic. Has at least got more stable to rebuild, but Don Arnie, it's fine, folks. 17k food at the bank. He's not going to run out of resources too fast. But if he doesn't build some siege, he's going to run out of opportunities. Trebs are on the way. He has one shot at this. And he knows it. And Avali. Oh, no. I, I actually think Avali might be quicker here. Remember, Rams get bonus damage against Wolves. I'm pretty sure he also got the upgrade from the Siege Workshop, right? So he's got Imperial Age Rams. It's a bit hard. Wait, no. Has he, has he not? There's, I mean, there's no way. He had Bombards, right? You want to get the movement speed. Am I blind or has he legit not? Oh wow, Avali never built a Siege Workshop. So he never got the, the Greased Axles. He got nothing in terms of upgrades for a Siege. Okay, this is gonna be tight. Ram's being rushed right now. Avali, he has an option. He tried to delete his army and defend at home, but doesn't need to. Look at the Spearman. It's an absolute massacre. Ardy failed to storm Normandy and now has to go around by land. And I don't think he's got enough steam here. <laughs> Love that. Avali, he leaves a spearman in the TC to try and bait. Berkshire sorted. But if I was Avali, I'd feel insulted. If this is all you've got, it will not be enough. Don Arty. Needs to get those trebuchets in range. More horsemen on the way constantly. In the meantime, Ram's going to start to break through the walls. Now, remember, the ranged armor is not necessarily very high. It's high enough to at least stop Lombo. So unless there are hand cannons, which there are, you can't get through the siege tower quickly. And the assault has been repulsed. Avali holds on. Don Arty at risk of elimination. Needs to get in and defend right now. Walls are going to crumble. Longbows and hand cannons moving in. If they just target onto the siege tower, they could end this right here and now. Instead, they try to protect the rams, and interestingly enough, Don Arnie focuses on the rams instead of the army. Folks, there's just three hand cannons here, but remember, those hand cannons, they have plenty more than 18 ranged armor, uh, range damage, rather. They can just target it down, and it's not going to last long. A moment of silence for the Ardy that was. And now Avali has expanded the English Empire to the heights of its historical power. I'd say this is more like half the world under his influence. Everything looking up for him now. The biggest threat to him removed and everyone else now distracted. Core still diving into Recon's base, but Recon returning the favor. TC is still the garrison point for the king. There's nowhere else you can go, remember. What are you going to do? Garrison beside an outpost? <laughs> Not happening. Goldrins will be able to deal with the Valchuans. Oh my lord. Rams here. Hand cannon is spimming everything he needs to end this. Folks, I think Core has reached his uh, last moments in this game. It's just a matter of who's going to die faster, him or Mr. Munch. Mr. Munch, who has had a giant chunk of his base removed. I know where Recon's king is. He's, he was here. But where's he moved now? Has he gone back to the TC? Wait, where, where is Recon's king now? What has he done? What? Where? 
Is he in an outpost? Which outpost? What in the deuce? Wait. <laughs> well, this is a foolproof plan as long as, as Core is dead. Uh, otherwise, there are, there are many questions to be asked. I'm sure this will definitely not come back to bite him in the arse in, I don't know, five or ten minutes. Well, arse hasn't just been bitten. It's been raw ripped off here, Mr. Munch. I mean, he's still got 18k food, but you just don't have the bonus to produce with. Oh. The Lord has truly dismounted him here. Navali. He can accelerate this process or look for a different target. He's following his way. Might be worth building some walls. Oh, he's already got gates over here, so that's fine. He could easily just go and take out Recon as well. Recon. We have got some Treb now, so this should be the, the end game state. Because culverins are just giant sniper rifles at this stage. Like, I don't know if you guys uh, have ever seen what these culverins can do to villages. It's kind of like watching a barrack 50 cal go to, go to work on an innocent village. Wait, recon! Oh no! It actually happened. Cole was actually using... He finally used treason. Why? Why did he even pull it from the, the... It was safer behind the wall than in this outpost. Oh, that's a doubt post right there. Oh, <laughs> no! He takes the entire army as his own. Wait, Cor... <laughs> Wait, Cor, you need to not be pop... Wait, what? But he got the extra pop cap, right? I forgot to mention that. Remember, like, you get extra pop cap when you kill kings, but, like, you can't convert past 200? What? All right. I guess that's the way it's coded. Because um, you can now go past the, the, the... You get 50 extra pop cap for each king you snipe, right? So you can go past pop cap in that regard. But I guess from a, a coding perspective, when a wall wall is checked... It, and it does the conversion, it's probably doing if pop cap is 200, then delete. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because that would actually put Core basically up to pop cap again, right? At 250 this time. Which would have given him an army to instantly march north with. Meanwhile, Avali continues to march north with his almost 300 pop cap at this phase, folks. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to Drongo for adding in the extra 50 pop cap when you kill. A king, by the way. I think it's such a productive element to gameplay. Instead of just sitting back and jerking off like a monkey in a tree, you have a reason to come out and kill. Even early, you have a justification for doing it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I do believe Mr. Marine Lord is about to get uh, another 50 added. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the most desperate retreat plan possible. I... I <laughs> So Marine Lord knows how treason works, right? I don't know if he's been using it this game though. Because I'm wondering about like when Court so Court obviously used treason to see the outpost, right? But like the whole time when Recon was sitting behind this tree line, he could have just dove him. I don't know if treason got used there. It seems like Marine Lord is jet though. He's like smells like regicide. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Munch. And then the were free. That might soon be too. <laughs> Marine Lord's away from home. Avali, while he has a very clear dominant pop cap lead, trying to go in. Wait, what? And cause Tash shot at 60 HP. Oh god, that's pain. Well, I, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got my confusion. I saw two six five. I was like, wait, what's happening here? That's right. You have to still build the houses. God, that made me for a second. I was like, why has he only got 15 extra pop cap? So, uh, who has faith in Marine Lord here? I think he holds for the moment, right? But, like, Avali, surely, is he just going to build a proxy base in the center?
Is Cole a threat right now? I wouldn't be surprised if Ali keeps going from reload. Like, the Mongol kind of feels like a, an easy pick, right? Because, like, you know, you know where he's going to be. He's not going to have these laid defenses as much. I say that. It's starting to change, though. You're seeing Koi's moving out with plenty of these outposts. Upgraded with cannons, so it's difficult to dive past. It's kind of tricky. It kind of feels like if you all in on one player, you just you crown the other. I don't know if there's a way that it actually keeps track for other players on what the pop cap limit is. So that's an interesting thing to think about is that players will have to gather info on who killed who and keep track of that. Because with this extra 50 pop cap, if you misread the situation and you go after the wrong player, like let's say both Marine Lord and Avali target Cool because they think he's stronger, but they haven't kept track of like how many he's killed, then like we can see it's a bad play because he's the weakest player by pop cap. But this is something you manually have to keep track of throughout the game. Dude, I'm actually looking forward to more of these games. This is honestly it's such a big improvement over normal Mega Ran free throws. I think the problem with normal Mega Ran free throws, and I've said this before, is like they just kind of get stagnant. People don't want to move, they don't want to do things. These are the type of things I want. I remember I was talking about this idea of like care packages in the center that you could capture with resources to get people to come out. And this has a similar goal, right? Extra pop cap, you have every justification to come out and play the game. Because if you don't, if you sit at home, and you just make monkey noises for a whole hour. When it's suddenly down to a 1v1, you're not going to be stronger because your opponent might have killed, like, say, three players and has an extra 150 bomb cap. Marine Lord is marching for core, though. Core just hauling that payday for anyone wondering what the hell this is all about. It's all about money. You should have the bounty upgrade here, right? Get the big payday. There we go. Whoa. You know what I'm hearing there? More cannon outposts. Meanwhile, Marine Lord. He's snaking in. Avli is also on the way. So they are targeting out the weaker player here. By the way, this is... So remember that issue we talked about where, like, you want to go after... It, it, you want to go after the, 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 like, weakest player as first, second. This is that in action, and it gets amplified further. In that because there is 50 pop cap on the line you are more encouraged than you normally would be in a free fall format to take out the weaker player. And some people will like, you know, they, they might kind of like not like that, but I think that that's better than having this third place and first place, uh, first place take out second place format, right? The reason why they're both going off the weaker player is because there is something clearly to gain that is permanent, that you otherwise can't. It's a 50 pop cap difference that would decide this game as both of them right now have killed two players. Army's going to clash. Meanwhile, Avali, he's marching in for the backstab. Cool. He tried to mirror the maneuver, but it's too late. March in. Cannon in place, but aren't here to defend, though. Bao Chuan's as well. Not going to make this easy. And I believe that is a transport ship, ladies and gentlemen. Cool. He's out on the seas. And middle fingering from his yacht. However, one army might be made of melee units. This army, on the other hand, they got a lot of pew pew. The question is whether you can reach those. A 600 health transport, it has no armor to speak of. The race is on. The taste of disappointment is going to be realized here. That town center is completely empty. The Mangonels, if they get one volley out, though, could ruin cause that. Right now, they are struggling to figure out what pathfinding is. Core stays alive. But right now, it feels like he is playing in a zombie apocalypse situation here. It never stops, right? You're, play, you're playing Call of Duty Nazi zombies. There is simply no end. It's just, what's your high score? Because I don't see a world in which either of these players turns on the other. It, it's just, it's too hard. It would take you too long, right? Like, you're in a situation where you're Mongols and the other players have wolves, right? <laughs> It's that simple. Are they going to spend time breaching walls and allowing reaction? Or are they just going to full in baboon the guy who has no walls? Who has no castles that he can shuffle his poor little king between? You know, I'm actually, the more I just like, say that, I, the, I, the more I realize I like this format because it screws over Mongols. <laughs> 
even when they trade in the late game, it's like, well, where are you going to hide your king, bro? All right, hear me out, folks. We need, uh, we need a map spawn similar to that one Core had, where he almost won with a uh, a wonder victory on an island in Outback Octagon One. We need it with this King format. Just do the same thing, Core. Just convert all your pop cap into Baochuans, and you sit on a giant lake. No one can reach you. Marching again, Marine Lord. I, honestly, I feel like whoever brings maybe one or two cauldrons of Springles and parts on the other side can then just win this. But for now, it's an absolute bloody bloodbath. Ships are being targeted and brought down pretty damn fast. Look at the poison stacking up there. Does that work? Oh my god, that actually works. How do you poison a Bouchua? I mean, I guess you could just, you know, poison the water that the sailors used, but what? <laughs> but the poison doesn't work on siege, right? Like, I've tested that before. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But it works on the ships. It makes sense, really. These are not ships, ladies and gentlemen. These are beasts. Cool. Still holding on, though. Starting to realize why, why he's called Core. Because you go, Core? How has he done that? I'm not sure how much longer you can do it, though. <laughs> they are not stopping. Uh, his food income is good. His gold is a little bit lacking. So I'm a bit concerned on how you replace an army after you lose it. Carnot Palace has been MVP, though. Just all these freebie units constantly. It's definitely gone the mile. Oh, God. We've reached such a weird state in the game, though. Marine Lord and Avali are never going to stop hitting him. And Core, I mean, in some ways he enjoys the attention. I, I, I know, I know what he's like. He's like, oh, look, all this pressure. Let's just keep doing this. He's like, if only I got points for units killed. Let's win the breach. This time we have got Culverins ready to go, though, right? So, like we said, you can't go on the water anymore with the king. You'll lose him. And this is a rush to get more outposts up. Now, Core does have some stone to work with. So can get a decent amount of those cannon placements, but they're 375 stone each. It's not an infinite bank that he's working with here. <laughs> yeah, I gotta give it a call, man. He's uh, he's actually doing everything right to just stay in this game. The burn down on all these dead players is crucial. Without this, he couldn't afford to keep replacing these outposts. It's getting him the stone he needs, remember, because each building's worth 75 stone. And uh, Recon definitely paid out in that regard. Remember, all these farms were worth 75 food, wood, and stone as well. Did I say wood, sorry, add uh, gold. Food, gold, and stone. One point in the breach. If only these two could, I, I don't know, like, sink their attacks. <laughs> March in though, Marine Lord. He's bringing the bomb bars. The bomb bad warriors have arrived. Movement in by the Bauchuans. Needs to target out the siege fast here. Culver and sniping him down. Rams also in. Need to address the outposts. He's almost done with the front line of them. This is dangerous territory for Core. And a backstab could be on the way. Spruill's now moving in from Avali to snipe out the Navy force. Marine Lord's wave is going to be once again pushed back, but he may have just done enough damage to open the doors for Avali. After see, men at arms are now being scaled up. Springholds can stay out of range. They have also got that attack speed aura, so they can obliterate the fleet quicker. Cool, this dance, it gets harder and harder. Yeah, you can see he's not even actually burning down the buildings anymore. This is a problem for Cool. He, it's all hands on deck type situation, right? To chase away these players correctly, like you have to. So you can't just split off, you know, 20, 30 pop cap and have them torching buildings. Yeah, it's got plenty of stone to work with in the meantime, though. So not the end of the world to be forced to do this. 
Avali. Well, we saw him sneak out here a while ago. I wonder what he was doing. He wants to take out both players, but it's not going to work. Marine Lord sniffs it out in the early stages. Avali will have to figure out just going back to the drawing board on this one. I love the fact he was setting up two bases, by the way, for this. Marine Lord, too wise to it, man. He laid out posts out in the mid map, right? So it's not easy to sneak up on him like this. I think this is the point where you just type to each other, okay, let's not try to snake, let's work together. Because all we've done by doing this is give him more resources for Core to now stay alive with. Because these are more buildings he can burn down. And Avali, he went for a wonder. Now, I, I did say earlier on, I wasn't sure if this was an option still, but it seems it is. I mean, it makes sense that it would be. Right? Like, the Kings are there to kind of fuel the game to end faster, but if you get a full stalemate like we got here, I mean, the only maneuver left is to go for a wonder victory. It is going to take just under 15 minutes, though, to get there. Havili, this might be the point where you want to start, you know, stonewalling a little bit wider, creating layer upon layer. He has done a decent job of that on front of his base. I am a bit concerned about the eastern side being exposed, though. Yeah, this should be where Marine Lord comes from the north and Core just focuses the east. There are loads of kind of critical points that could be walled here for Avali. Yeah, he's building more stone walls now. Uh, one of his big problems here is he doesn't have any stone outcroppings remaining. So you have to buy the stone. And uh, let me see if I can find a marketplace. I'm pretty sure that it's all been bought out already. Marketplace. Oh, marketplace. Where are you? That's how I talk to my marketplaces. He has got a marketplace, right? Somewhere. Am I blind? It's it's a pot. Ah, there. 254 gold's not bad. I think it's worth doing. Like, get your hands on um, 1,500 stone, maybe. Get a second layer of stone walls in here. There's definitely room as well. Just delete the pass heads. That's right. Me, me, that Artie, it, what it is, is it's clearly it's something about Avali. We're just blind to Avali things. Then again, Avali's blind as well. Shout out to him completely failing to find my Seagate castle and get me out of the last known map played. <laughs> we got his ass good. Might have to go back and cast my own replay. Oh, wait, no, it's on a separate patch. Damn it, he's been protected. Oh, is he protected enough here, though? Core is still just burning through the remaining base. Oh, that, this is a milkable opportunity. Bunch of villagers quite out of position. It won't hurt Avali too much, remember. He has still got a stupid amount of wood behind him. Marine Lord's now marching in. Rams on the move as well. This is going to be so difficult to reach. Oh, God. He's, he's shining bright like an exterminatus right now. I mean, this attack speed aura makes it so difficult to breach. The fact he's playing mass lombos with all these raxes as choke points. I, oh, I freaking hate the English so much. <laughs> I feel for Marine Law right now. This is not going to be simple to breach. Meanwhile, a few men at arms did sneak on the backside to mess with the ram build up. The rams are shoveling towards Marine Lord's base. Mass scout production coming out in the meantime for M Lord. He's got a long way to go. He hasn't built much of a proxy base, so he might as well get into the cavalry. Need more court. Marches forward. Rams are on the way. Remember, we didn't get any second layer of stone walls here, so... Dangerous position for Avali. Avali also doesn't have Lombos on the eastern flank to position on the walls. They are all defending the west side approach. Green Lord is starting to get in range with these Rams, so starting to slow down the reproduction rates. Court now plays his hand, so Avali will be split in terms of attention. That's got plenty of archery rangers nearby to get a second wave of longbows out. It looks like Marine Lord has to admit defeat. He walks away with his tail between his legs, but he doesn't do so quickly. I, what is going on here? Guys, can we just... 
For the love of God, the Rams are ruining at us. <laughs> but guys, we can't leave the Rams behind. No, leave them. Just leave them. Oh, good God. Second wave is at least coming, but these guys are weaker. I mean, he had sofas before, now we're on Warrior Scouts. Core has at least broken through the wall. Some people are like, why has he forgotten how A click works? He's just taking his time. He's building the siege workshops to support what comes next. He's still got a long, bloody way to go to reach the Cathedral of St. Thomas. He has to go all the way through the production lines. And Core, if I'm not mistaken, he's pushing these Ann Cannoneers, yes, from all the way back home. Even with Yam, this is not what I would call a fast and furious race. There is a need to be there. Horseman, drunk riding right now. Just trying to get around the backside to just delay, keep the Rams away. Meanwhile, look how far out Avali pushed. That resale on M-Lord is going to buy crucial time here. Mass Lombos have marched across now. They're not quick to kill the Rams, but they'll get through it in time. Especially when you use Volley. <laughs> I'm pretty sure these hand cannons are going to die quicker than they can arrive. I'm starting to lose faith in the plan here, folks. We are just over nine minutes away. And uh, I believe this is what they call not in sync. Right, these guys would not be able to join a boy band with Justin Timberlake. Because this assault, they're taking it in turns right here. Marine Lord is once again in, as Core has to back away. At least be able to hide on the walls, so that's at least one little benefit for him, but the problem is the Lombos don't care. There's just too bloody many of them. M Lord will at least be able to breach through most of the racks on the front side, but I think there's enough spears here to repel him once more. That's important, by the way. If you can delay this once again, it stops him breaking through the walls. It stops him from flooding. Maganels are at risk here, but they're going to stand their ground. Heavy walloping. A few spears will make their way through, though. That's an important slowdown. These Maganels, they're being produced fairly far away. I, I'm struggling, guys. I like this. This is a very hard one to kind of give them a, a way in with the current plan. If Core had production all right here I, I'd feel more confident but he's pushing them cross map similar from Marine Lord right like he's finally added in the racks here so he's able to produce and get back in the fight faster but you need that acceleration on both sides yeah you know, if you can't sync your attacks because communication is hard you know core core speaks clearly only German Marine Lord clearly speaks only French they definitely don't both know English then your alternative is at least build proxy bases so you don't need to coordinate I think because of just the relentless amount of units Marino's pushing, Core might have a timing here in the next two minutes with his assault. If Marino keeps this type of number count up, Core will be able to make ground. Especially now that Avali has to back up like this. Now remember, this could all be a bait. The wonder is one thing, but they could alternately go after the king. It's unlikely in this situation considering just how much more tanky the Barkshire is. It's always an option. Choke point hold. Maganel smashing through him, though. Now, the Sprills are becoming the MVPs here. Wraparound will start to commence. They can get cleaned up. The Maganels can reign supreme. That's going to be critical. Remember, you're playing mass melee into these choke points with attack speed spears. Green Lord. Getting burnt on the first wave, but a second one not far behind it. Cool. Now gaining ground on the eastern frontier. He moves in. And the wraparound is also on the way. So Horseman diving deep towards the Cathedral of St. Thomas. Not a strong enough force to kill off the Wonder. At least it'll be able to get a head start on it. Maybe do some damage. The problem is that Avalie has already parked 47 villagers here to fix any damage. Six minutes, 20 seconds away. Can they get deep? Can they do it fast enough? Cool. Taking his time, taking out all the infrastructure first. Doesn't want to get caught with his tail between his legs when someone reaches around from behind. Understandable when you consider how many stables can easily just come up from behind you here. But it is giving vital time to Avali. Marine Lord in onto the White Tower. Still going to create that choke point. This is actually the nuisance. I think Core needs to be here because Marine Lord has unavoidable choke points here. 
Right? These landmarks, even when they go down, they're going to remain. That's going to funnel your troops in. Of course, you know, he's relying on being able to get deep enough with a lot of these warrior scouts. Get the opportunity instead. Look at this. He has to run away. Men at Arms will give chase. We'll be able to burn a few more of the mangonels. And I am seeing an issue now for Marine Lord. Look at his gold. At 900 a minute here. I, I, I don't think he can replace the Lost Siege. It's, a, it's actually critical that he keeps these units alive. Throw away anything else, right? Throw away the Warrior Scouts. Throw away the Donsos. You can afford food of wood. But gold, my friend, is something you can't easily afford. Same for Core. Core has been relying on hand cannoneers and now the Siege as well. I mean, his gold number is not looking good either. Avli, meanwhile, doesn't really burn his gold fast, right? Still has over 4k in reserve. Men at arms aren't exactly pricey there. A few Spirals here and there. Does burn your pocket a bit. Not as much as it's burning in return. Mangonels now being targeted out. Hand cannoneers have to dive in, but that means the Lombos milk them to death. Don't ask me what getting yeah, milk to death looks like. I imagine there's more blood than milk. Marine Lord, dude, this feels so bad. Like, it's less than five minutes and you have to move east to deal with the infrastructure. Perfect situation now developing for Avali. I would like to remind people that we are just over four minutes away from a wonder victory and they haven't really reached the bark shit yet. There was that attempt to dive around the back, but there, there hasn't been an attempt to kill the big boy Barky yet. Marine Lord makes like a swell war two. He's going to run away again. But it's a feigned retreat. He wants the wraparound. He pulls his opponent out into the open field. And now he's going to turn into a massacre. Reform of the lines just long enough for the men at arms. He's going to delay. And remember, he still has these choke points to hold. In the meantime, Core has done anything but hold. Right now, the only thing he's holding is his head in his hands. All that ground. All that momentum. And yet now, it has evaporated. And I think this is going to be the do or die moment for Core. You see what he's doing. It's mass horsemen. Every single pop cap you can afford. Get it in there. And get ready to ram it down this throat. The problem, however, are those choke points. Choke points, which he's fleshing out now. So this was the weak point. And Core kind of helped Avali by uh, exposing it, right? He's layered it. Now with these outposts here, you create these, these smaller breaches. And when you try to flood horsemen through them, for anyone who's tried to like horsemen rush an opponent to death in the late game, you know how messy it gets running past buildings. Problematic. Three minutes away. Trade point hold, attack speed there, the volley again. I... Honestly, this looks weaker than the last one. I think Marine Lord's army just got wiped, and that's like what? Maybe you kill one unit for every four lost? I'm being generous at that stage. Core is marching in though. This is his last shot. Because the next time I have a horseman army in this position, you'll be within maybe 20 seconds of the time of ticking. Men at arms in the choke point to try and body block. TC is going to be targeted. Core doesn't want to mess around. He understands he just needs to bloody bleed through fast here. Villagers, they can body block though. And they just stand their ground. The horsemen, they can't get in. Moving in with the torches now. On the Cathedral of St. Thomas. Torch down to half HP. Core, his army is dying fast. The repair rate. I think he's stabilized. Core has got nothing left. Less than two minutes away. And the Great Pony Massacre is over. Core, second wave on the way, but it may be too little too late. GG gets called. Avalie takes the win.